Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll explore the three rules that are related to conjunction. Conjunction is the formal way of writing what we think of as words such as and, but, also, etc. Instead of using and, we'll try to use conjunction. And the first rule that we have is a rule for taking apart a conjunction. The way that it's written in natural deduction is if you have a formula phi and a formula psi and they are conjoined, that is there's a conjunction, from that you can deduce that the formula phi belongs on its own line. And we say that that is and elimination type 1. Likewise, if you see a conjunction, you can deduce that the right conjunct belongs on its own line. And we call that conjunction elimination type 2. These are independent, and in natural deduction, we need both of them. A third rule is that if you see a formula on one line of a proof, and you see another formula on a different line of the proof, you can write the conjunction of these two as a new line in your proof. And that is conjunction introduction. Let's try to use these to prove a simple property of conjunction. When we say something such as P is true and Q is true, we naturally think that it's also the case that if the Q is true and P is true. The way that we would write this in natural deduction is we would say that the conjunction of P and Q as a premise means that we can prove that Q conjoined with P is, is, the, uh, is the result. So, what I like to do is I always like to write all the premises down first. So that will be P conjoined with Q. And in natural deduction, we always have three things for a line. We have a number for it, we have a formula, and then we have a reason. And in this case, the reason is that that is a premise of our proof. And the conclusion of our proof, we don't know how many lines it will take, so I generally leave a generous amount, is that will be Q conjoined with P. If we examine this premise, we'll use what I call forward reasoning. If we examine this premise, we can see that we could pull it apart using these two rules. I'll pull out the P part first, so as a new line of that proof, I can conclude P, and the reason is, the way we write it is, that'll be line one is the line that we're referring to, and the reason is this is conjunction elimination type one. I can similarly write line three as Q, and that also follows from the first line using conjunction elimination type two. Well, I can now, taking a look at everything that precedes it in the proof and take a look at my conclusion, I can say, oh, well, the conclusion follows from these, so it must be number four. And the reason that it follows is, let's be careful here. Um, we don't have to do it this way. I prefer to do it this way, is this follows from line three and line two using conjunction introduction. And I've put these in this order because those are the order in which I'm using the lines according to this. Now, let's take a, a careful look at this again. This says if one formula is on a line and another formula is on another line, this rule doesn't tell us that the formulas have to be in that particular order, and that's what we've used here. So what we've done is we've proved an instance of what's called commutativity, or that this is, that conjunction is commutative. 
what we've shown is that if we have the simple formula P and the simple formula Q, we can interchange those. And indeed, we can do this, we can use this kind of proof whenever we need to. Let's try another one. Let's suppose that now that we know that conjunction or the AND operator is commutative, we naturally will think from basic mathematical logic that it's also associative. That is, I can assert P and Q and R, and it really doesn't matter what order I put them in, and it doesn't matter what order I group them in. Well, that's what we think. Let's prove that that's the case in a simple example. Suppose that we have P conjoined with Q, and that result is conjoined with R. What we want to prove is let's say we want to prove that we could move those parentheses over by one. So what we are saying is that from this premise it follows that P conjoined with Q conjoined with R is a conclusion of the proof. As before, I'll write down my premises. In this case, there's just one premise, and that is P conjoined with Q conjoined with R, and my reason is that that's a premise. And following my usual style, I'll write down a conclusion, which is P conjoined with Q conjoined with R, and now, in the previous proof, we used what I call forward reasoning. Now let's try using backward reasoning. Backward reasoning is from the only available rules that we have, how could we possibly have arrived at this? And the answer is, let's take a look at the structure of the formula. Overall, this structure is a conjunction. It's a formula P, and it's conjoined with a more complicated formula that's Q conjoined with R. The only way that I can arrive at that is if I use conjunction introduction. So I know that conjunction introduction has to be part of this. Well, in order to do that, I know that I have to have each of these conjuncts as separate lines of the proof. And that means that somewhere along the proof, I have to have concluded P. How? Oh, I'm not sure yet. I also have to have concluded Q conjoined with R. How? Well, looking at the premise, it's I almost certainly have to use conjunction introduction. And to use that, I would have to have Q and R on their own lines. Well, let's try writing that. Let's say that I want to have Q on its own line and I want to have R on its own line. How could I get Q on its own line? Well, one way would be, now I go back and say, how could I get it from this? Well, in order to get it from this premise, if I used conjunction elimination type one, I would have P and Q. Then I could pull out the Q, and then I would be partway along in my proof. So let's, let's try that. Let's say that we'll have P conjoined with Q. That will be line two of our proof. And the way we got there was we use line one and conjunction elimination type one. Ah, then I can conclude Q from that. So now I'm going to use forward reasoning and say I can conclude Q from line two, and that is using conjunction elimination type 2. Well, how could I have arrived at R? Well, the only way I can, I can't get it from this because that R isn't in it. I can't get it from this line because R isn't in it. But I can get it from this line because R is sitting over as a right conjunct. So I could say that that's line 4, and I arrive at that from line 1 using conjunction elimination type 2. How could I have arrived at P? Well, not from this line and not from this line, but I could get it from that. So that could be my line 5. I could say that that 
is a result of reasoning from line 2 using conjunction elimination type 1. Q and R, oh, those follow because I can build those up from previous lines. So that would be line 6 in my proof. I would say that, that uh, con I can conclude that from line 3 and line 4 using conjunction introduction. And now I'm almost done. My conclusion is line 7, and that comes from applying line 5 and line 6 using the only rule that it was possible to use to deduce this, which is conjunction introduction. So what we've done in this brief uh, session is we've laid out three rules for um, conjunction in natural deduction. We've shown one example of how conjunction is commutative, and we've shown one example of how conjunction is associative. So that ends this session, and in further sessions, we'll explore some other rules.